after this module, you shall be able to know the meaning and need of accounting, learn the fundamentals of accounting, identify the users of accounting, evaluate the qualitative characters of accounting, and know the different branches of accounting. So let me introduce this concept of accounting to you. Language is the medium to exchange ideas. In fact, whenever any information need to be communicated by one person or party to another person or party, then language is required. Accounting is also a language of business. As with the help of accounting, a business entity communicates not only to internal parties, but also to the external world. Such communication may be regarding its profitability, solvency, liquidity, etc. Like any other language, accounting also has certain rules and principles. The double accounting bookkeeping system moves around the rules of debit and credit. According to Anthony and Rees, Accounting resembles a language in that some of its rules are definite where others are not. Accountant or accountants differ as to how a given event should be reported, just as the grammarians differ as to the many matters of sentence structure, punctuation, and choice of words. Nevertheless, just as many practices are clearly poor English or language, many practices are definitely are poor accounting. Languages, they evolve and change in response to changing needs of society. And so does accounting. Meaning and definition of accounting. Section 3. Meaning and definition of accounting. Let us begin with the meaning of accounting. Every economic activity or entity has its own financial information which is required to be measured, processed and definitely to be disseminated. Accounting provides tools to achieve such objective. Accounting is a service activity which provides an information system where transactions and events are the basic inputs and through a systematic process they are finally converted into financial statements. The importance of accounting can be understood from the fact that every entity has a separate department which handles this work called as accounts department. Let us look at some of the definitions. In 1941, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, AICPA, has defined accounting as the art of recording, classifying and summarizing in a significant manner and in terms of money, transaction and events which are in part at least of a financial character and interpreting the results thereof. As per this definition, the following are the main clauses. A. Accounting is an art. B. The major aspects are recording, classifying and summarizing. C. The transactions and events are measured in terms of money. D, D, the results are also interpreted. The above definition clearly indicates the procedural aspects of accounting. The process starts with the identification of those transactions and events which are of financial character and can be expressed in terms of money. These are then recorded in the primary books of accounts in the form of general entries or subsidiary books, followed by 
methodological classification into ledgers in principal books. The transactions are ultimately summarized in the form of final accounts. But this definition lacks the modern aspects of accounting like communication of results. Another important definition was given by American Accounting Association in 1966. They have defined accounting as a process of identifying, measuring and communicating economic information to permit informed judgments and decisions by the users of information. But this definition is too general as there may be much economic information which may not be directly related with accounting. For example, if a comparative study is made about productivity of two pieces of land, then definitely it is the economic information, but not accounting information. In 1970, APB, Accounting Principal Board of AICPA, accounting is a service activity. Its main function is to provide quantitative information, primarily financial in nature, about economic entities that is intended to be useful in making economic decisions. Let's go into the history of accounting in this section 3.3. Accounting has a rich heritage. The early development of accounting began thousands of years ago and can be traced to ancient civilizations, mainly Babylonia and Egypt around 4000 BC. They recorded transaction of payments of wages and taxes on clay tablets. Babylonia, also known as the city of commerce, used accounting for business to detect frauds, inefficiencies, and also to trace losses taking place due to theft or otherwise. The Romans in 700 BC to 4000 AD started preparing memorandum or day book where receipts and payments were recorded and posted to ledgers on monthly basis. In India, the accounting could be traced back to a period when Kotilya, a minister in Chandragupta's kingdom, wrote a book named Arthasastra, which also described the method of maintaining accounts. In 1494, an Italian mathematician, Lusa Pacioli wrote a book, Summa di Arithmetica, Geometrica Proportional at Proportionality, Review of Arithmetic and Geometric Proportions. A portion of this book contained the knowledge of business and bookkeeping for the first time. He used the words debito and credito to record business transactions. He discussed the details of memorandum, journal and ledger and specialized accounting procedures. He is honored as the father of accounting. Objectives of accounting. According to statements of financial accounting concepts, number one issued by FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the objective of accounting is to provide information that is useful for making business and economic decisions. Specifically, the information should be useful to investors and lenders, be helpful in determining a company's cash flows and report the company's assets, liabilities and owner's equity and the changes in them. It is quite clear that the objective of accounting is as much more than mere recording only. These may be summarized as follows. The basic objective of accounting is to record those business transactions which can be expressed in terms of money. Unless this recording is made systematically, classification and summarization cannot be done at all. The second is the preparation of income statement may also be taken as one of the objectives of accounting. The accounting helps in knowing the financial performance of the entity during a particular period. Third, the ascertainment of financial position of the business is served by the accounting through the preparation of balance sheet. The stakeholders are not only interested in knowing the results of the enterprise, 
but are also interested to know the status of assets and liabilities as on a particular point of time. Accounting also facilitates rational decision making by providing financial information to the users of accounting. Let us now look at the procedural aspects of accounting in our section 5. On the basis of various definitions of accounting, it emerges that the whole process of accounting passes through the following six stages. These are also called as the procedural aspects of accounting. The stages are procedure of accounting. One can see the first is recording, second is classifying, third is summarizing, fourth is analyzing, the fifth is interpreting, and sixth is communicating. Let us look at each one of them one by one. Recording. On the basis of source documents like sales bill, purchases invoice, passbooks, etc., the business transactions are recorded. The special book which is used to record the transactions is called as general. As per American system of accounting, this general book may be subdivided into eight different books called as subsidiary books. These are cash books, purchase book, sales book, purchases return book, sales return book, bills receivable book, bills payable book, and the general book. It is important to note that recording is called as basic function of accounting. The second function is classifying. After recording, there is a need to group the entries of similar nature at one place. For example, there may be monthly entries for payment of salaries. Now at the end of the year, we require the total amount paid towards salaries for the year. One method could be to scroll the general and just search the related entries and then take their total. But it is unsystematic and cumbersome process and cannot be applied for all heads. Moreover, there are fair chances of making errors. Alternatively, if we take the help of ledger, then the same work may be done methodologically in a different or efficient and error-free manner. The second phase of accounting is concerned with the systematic analysis of the recorded data. This book, which contains classified information, is called as ledger. The process of transferring a transaction from a journal to ledger is called as posting. The ledger book is divided into serially numbered pages. Each page is technically called as folio. It may be noted that like general, ledger may also be subdivided into debtor's ledger, creditor's ledger, and general ledger. The third function is summarizing. At the end of the period, there is a need to find out the ultimate result of current year's business operations and also to disclose the financial position. The financial performance is determined or determined by income statement and financial position as reflected by balance sheet. It is clear that summarizing is concerned with the preparation and presentation of the classified data. In fact, after balancing of accounts, a statement is prepared to show the net balances of all the ledger accounts called as trial balance. Trial balance provides basis for the preparation of final accounts. The fourth uh, function is analyzing. Analysis refers to the methodical classification of the data provided by the financial statements. It is concerned with the establishment of relationship between the various items of income statement or balance sheet. For example, when we calculate the ratio of current assets and current liabilities, that is current ratio, then it is a subject matter of analyzing. It provides basis for interpretation. Interpretation is related with explaining the meaning 
and significance of relationship established by analysis of accounting data. For example, analysis shows what the current ratio is, but what this ratio indicates can be known by its interpretation only. Like if it is 2.5 is to 1, then it reflects good short-run solvency position of the entity. This information is important for the suppliers in deciding whether the goods to be sold to the entity on credit. Communication. The oldest form of accounting was basically to discharge a stewardship function. The wealthy man used to employ stewards to manage their personal property. But with the advent of 21st century, the form and nature of accounting have tremendously changed. Now it is more of reporting than accounting. It can be seen that now accounting standards have also been changed to financial reporting standards. The communication aspects of accounting is concerned with the transmission of summarized, analyzed and interpreted information. This can be seen with the help of this uh, diagram or figure which gives us the accounting cycle. Let us now look at the bookkeeping. As per J.R. Bartley Boy, bookkeeping is an art of recording business transactions in a set of books. The procedural stages of accounting up to the preparation of trial balance are covered under bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is an activity concerned with the recording of financial data in significant and orderly manner. The responsibility of a bookkeeper is limited up to recording mainly. A substantial portion of the bookkeeping work is of a clerical nature. Let us understand the distinction between bookkeeping and accounting. The terms bookkeeping and accounting are not synonymous, but they are related to each other. Bookkeeping is a primary stage, whereas accounting is a secondary stage. Accounting starts where bookkeeping ends, and auditing starts where accounting ends. The following are the points of difference between the two, between bookkeeping and accounting. If we look at bookkeeping, it includes recording, classifying, and preparation of trial balance. Accounting, however, is related with summarizing of recorded transactions. Financial statements do not form part of bookkeeping, whereas financial statements form part of accounting. We can also see the third is there is no subfield of bookkeeping. However, in accounting, there are many subfields like financial accounting, management accounting, cost accounting, etc. Bookkeeping provides basis to accounting and accounting provides summarized information to the users of financial information. Therefore, it is treated as language of accounting. The last difference is the bookkeeping mainly does not reflect financial position, whereas accounting reflects the financial position. Let's look at the subfields of accounting. Unlike bookkeeping, accounting has many subfields, which are as follows. First, financial accounting. It is historical in nature with main focus on recording and classifying monetary transactions and preparations of financial statements. It basically helps in determination of the net results of financial performance for an accounting period and the financial position at the end of the year. The second is cost accounting. According to the Institute of Cost and Management Accountants of England, cost accounting is the process of accounting for cost, which begins with the recording of income and expenditure, or the basis on which they are calculated, and ends with the preparation of periodical statements and reports for ascertaining and controlling costs. Cost accounting is frequently used to facilitate internal decision making 
and provides tools with which management can appraise performance and control costs of doing business. The cost is identified with products and services up to the last possible level. Cost accounting includes cost ascertainment, cost control, and cost reduction. Management accounting. According to the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, SEMA, management accounting is the process of identification, measurement, accumulation, analysis, preparation, interpretation, and communication of information used by management to plan, evaluate, and control within an entity and to assure appropriate use of and accountability for its resources. Management accounting is concerned with internal reporting. Let's now discuss social responsibility accounting. As per Howard R. Brown, social responsibility of business means the obligation to pursue those policies, to make those decisions, or to follow those lines of action which are desirable in terms of the objectives and values of the society. Social responsibility accounting is concerned with accounting for social cost incurred by the enterprise and the social benefits created. Human resource accounting. As per American Accounting Association, human resource accounting is the process of identifying and measuring data about human resources and communicating this information to interested parties. It aims to identify, quantify, and report the investments made by an organization in its human resources. Let us now discuss the qualitative characteristics of accounting information. The basic purpose of accounting is to provide information about financial position, which is balance sheet, performance, income statement, and changes in financial position of an enterprise. This accounting information should provide a clear, true, and fair view of the affairs of enterprise. There are certain qualitative characteristics which must be embodied in accounting information so as to command respect. These qualitative characteristics are as follows. First, the reliability. The users depend upon accounting information to take decisions. This information at which major decisions are based must be reliable or else the decision can go wrong. Reliability means that the information should be true and free from bias. Another important aspect of reliability is that the information must also be complete. Half-truth can never be treated as reliable as the decision maker make wrong decisions in that case. The second important aspect is or qualitative characteristic is relevance. Relevant information is one that has the ability to influence the economic decision of the user. Information is said to be relevant when it provides feedback, value, and predictive value. Feedback value is derived from information concerning past events. Predictive value, on the other hand, is derived from information concerning future events. The relevant information should also be timely. The third characteristic is understandability. It is fairly assumed that the user of information have knowledge of business accounting and economic activity and they can reasonably understand the accounting information. But as far as possible, the information should be presented in simple form. However, complex matters that are relevant cannot be avoided to make these statements simple and easy to understand. The fourth property is comparability. The information must be comparable. 
users should be able to see similarities and differences amongst events and conditions. They can compare the information over a period of time to see how the entity is growing and how they may also compare across uh, different entities in the same industry in order to evaluate their relative performance and position. A closely held notion with comparability is the concept of consistency. As information can be comparable over a time period only if it follows the same accounting concepts and conventions consistently. Let us now discuss or understand the basis of accounting. The accounting can be done on the following basis. One, the cash basis. Under cash system, the actual receipts or payments are taken as the base. It means if salaries have been paid only for 11 months and are outstanding for one month, then the actual amount paid is considered under cash basis while preparing financial statements. Due to this reason, outstanding and prepaid items do not appear in accounts. The second basis could be the accrual basis. Under this system, the transactions and events are considered in accounts as and when they occur rather than on the basis of actual amount paid or received. It means all expenses and revenues for the relevant period is recorded irrespective of whether they are paid or received or not. Now we come to users of accounting information. Who are the users? Now accounting provides information which is helpful to users in taking better financial decisions. These users may either be internal or external. The internal users are basically the organizational participants. Usually top and middle level management require information for planning and controlling the operations. The external users neither have direct access to all the records of the enterprise nor they can influence or participate or can take part in decision making of the enterprise. Following are the various users of accounting information. First, the management. For evaluating the performance of entity and also to take appropriate measures to improve the results. Second are investors. They are the providers of fund to the entity. They need information to assess the ability of the entity to generate enough earnings to meet their required return. Third are the lenders. They are interested to know whether the entity would be able to repay principal as well as the interest component without default and also to take decision about further credit facility to be extended or not. The fourth set of users are creditors and suppliers. They are concerned about the recovery of their dues and also about the credit period. And another set of users are customers. There are some customers who use the product as a raw material. They are interested in assessing the stability of the business operations. These customers are generally industrial or bulk customers. Then we also have the users in the form of employees. For assessing the stability of business operations and also the profitability, it is helpful in assessing the job security and also bonus and timely payment of salaries. Last we have the government which is also a user for regulating the functioning and also the tax dues and tax received. Let us now understand the limitations of accounting. Accounting is based on certain assumptions, concepts and conventions. This brings subjectivity in accounting. For example, 
depreciation is calculated on the basis of cost, estimated scrap value, and estimated life. It is clear that one can manipulate the amount of depreciation by choosing estimated parameters as per own discretion. Following are the limitations of accounting. First, accounting considers only those transactions and events which can be measured in terms of money. It does not consider qualitative aspects like quality control, goods management, skills of the managers, etc. Second limitation is accounting includes element of subjectivity. There are certain accounting policies which are decided by the management at their own discretion. Third is accounting does not consider fair value or market value as it is based on cost concept only. For example, land may be appearing in the books at its original cost, whereas the present market price may be much higher than the book value. So let us now sum up what we have learned in this module. We have learned that accounting is the art of recording, classifying and summarizing in a significant manner and in terms of money, transactions and events which are in part at least of a financial character and interpreting the results thereof. Lusa Piscioli is honored as the father of accounting. The objectives of accounting is to provide information that is useful for making business and economic decisions. Accounting passes through the six stages, namely recording, classifying, summarizing, analyzing, interpretation, and communication. We have also learned that bookkeeping is an activity concerned with the recording of financial data in significant and orderly manner and it includes recording, classifying, and preparation of trial balance. There are many subfields of accounting like financial accounting, management accounting, cost accounting, etc. We have also discussed that there are two basis of recording accounting transactions. One is the cash or second is the accrual basis. We have also learned that the basic limitation of accounting is due to assumptions, concepts and conventions. This brings subjectivity in accounting.